5AA Breakfast Show. The news. The issues. Former Treasurer in the South Australian Labor Government, uh, Kevin Foley. I'm very disappointed and I share Joe Witherall's anger. The problem with Holden's is the same problem with Mitsubishi. They have designed a car that they cannot sell. General Motors has to take responsibility for its own incompetence. The 5AA Breakfast Show. Weekday mornings from 6 on 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. Interactive Radio. Text 1999 1395. Peter Godfrey. And quickly, a couple more texts and messages on the, the, the topic of cars that we've been talking about all night. Various uh, uh, angles on that. Ron mentioned before a car name that was just a single letter, which he mentioned was the Model T. The Ford uh, text says, what about the Model A? There's another one as well. Thank you for that. And on cars, Keza says, uh, from the Simpsons, remember the Homer car? Yeah, that was the one that Homer designed, wasn't it? That uh, was designed only as Homer could do it. Or their 4x4 Canyonero that uh, burst into flames whenever it bumped anything. Fantastic stuff. And Keza asks, can you find the theme song on YouTube? Um, won't get a chance in the remainder of this morning. Keza, remind me tomorrow and we'll see what we can do. Because let's head to New Zealand now. Catch up with uh, Selwyn Manning from livenews.co.nz. Selwyn, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Peter. Those cars, car names. Car names, yeah. Car names. Oh, we had one in New Zealand. It was New Zealand's only attempt to actually make a car, and it was, oh, it was kind of like a, a boiled-down Land Rover retrieve, yeah, yeah. and it was called the Trekker. The Trekker. <laughs> if there's any Kiwis up over that side of the ditch at the moment, they might say, the Trekker, that's right. So when was this? When, when? Oh, back in the early 70s. And the they kind 70s. of, it was around for oh, maybe a couple of years, and then I think the manufacturers of it just thought, oh, this is a dog, we'll give it Too up. Hard. And uh, the Trekker was kind of, became a bit of an institution and a joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure if somebody happened to hang on to one and keep it in a garage well, and uh, keep it in good condition, it's probably worth a dollar or two now, I, I, regardless. I wonder, reputation. I wonder if there's one down at the, um, the Museum of Transport and Technology. Must okay. check that out. It'll be okay. interesting. I'll get a photo and send to you. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other thing, of course, was the McLaren here. You know, um, yeah. oh, Bruce yeah, McLaren yeah, yeah. was. Um, uh, so you know, it goes from one extreme to the other. Of course, the McLaren was not a streetcar. So, no. <laughs> um, uh, I reckon the worst would have been the Bongo wagon. You know, the um... the, the, the the Mazda Bongo. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're around here. From you yeah. know. Um... Yeah, you, you wouldn't want to go in a corner too fast by with no. the wheelbase on those. They could well lean over, I would think. I reckon. Yeah, 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 very nice. All right, let's get on to some juicy political stuff. This saga you've been talking about is uh, just rolls on and on. And this is on the uh, the GS uh, GCSB or uh, your yeah. spy agency there, and all the the involvement of John Key uh, getting more weird now. Yeah, it's getting How more. So? More weird. This week, it is um, John Key is over in China at the moment. Yes, um, yep. Julia Gillard's over there yep. as well, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, from there, this whole issue has been continuing to consume uh, politicians and the media and the public. Um, what came out was uh, the, the, a leak of the report, a review report that the Prime Minister ordered one of his Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet people to look under the hood of the GCSB and see what was going on, what was wrong. So this woman's very experienced and respected woman, Rebecca Kitteridge, and she has spent the last few months having a look in there, and her report was leaked, or the main points of it were leaked to the media. Uh, that has forced the Prime Minister from China to release the report to uh, the public and media, of course. And what's in there is it shows categorically that the GCSB was not just illegally spying on Kim.com, the mega upload tycoon, mm -hmm. uh, that there were 85 other New Zealanders from 2003 through to 2012 where the GCSB was illegally spying. So this whole thing has become a hornet's nest. Now, the Prime Minister, the weird stuff, Peter, is the Prime Minister's solution to all of this is from China, he says, well, the GCSB, in my view, should be able to spy on New Zealanders. And when we get back, we're going to make a law that makes legal what the GCSB has been doing illegally. And um, people here are kind of scratching their heads and thinking, well, okay, yeah. yeah. Where's this guy coming from and yeah. what planet is he really on? And uh, this gets stranger and stranger. In the, in the parliament yesterday, you had very experienced National Party politicians, cabinet ministers, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, Bill English, they've been around a long time, standing up and trying to defend the indefensible. 
Um, and the, the, this, this by the days, it's almost like by degrees you can see that the Prime Minister's rationale is just getting more estranged from the public view. Mm. And whether or not that reflects in the support the pro, um, public gives his party and himself, well, time will tell. But certainly even his most friendly pundits, should we say, um, are starting to say that this guy is just bleeding credibility here. Yeah, is I mean this this has been ongoing, and and oh. each week you have something new that, that mm. that's that's come forth in this. I mean, is this the kind of thing that 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 could bring a government down ultimately? Is there could right. it go that way? Is there any any sort of thought or discussion starting to happen on that, or or is it yeah. not likely to? Are there other issues that are going to look? If he he wasn't such a pro- popular prime minister, if he was sitting there uh, in a situation like your Julia Gillard, as one would say, he'd be dog tucker. Mm. Um, but he does enjoy the favour of the public in, in proportions that we haven't seen in a long time. Okay. That's his saving grace. And this guy is actually playing that. I guess it gets to a time where if, if his own colleagues start to actually hear from their own supporters what we are hearing in the media from the general public, uh, then they will start to scratch their heads. But they know that he is there, and it might sound strange to the people listening to this, but he is there, the, the national-led government's political superstar. Now, for them to ditch him would mean that they would lose the next election. Mm. And they just do not have anybody to really get into that position that would be able to pull it off. Um, so, you know, they're in a difficult situation. The guy does look like he has been treating his office um, with a degree of... Um, you know, it's, it's a hard one to pin down, but uh, let's put it this way. He, he, he just seems to be too cosy and friendly for the job. Mm. Mm. And he, the aspects of accountability where uh, he's in charge and responsible for these spy agencies, and he's the only person under New Zealand law that has oversight over them. We do not have broader oversight uh, frameworks here. And he is just treating this as if, you know, will he put one of his old school boyfriends yeah. and, yeah. into the job to hit it, for example. That's yeah. one of the uh, the things that we spoke about yeah. in previous week. Yeah. This, this goes on, Peter, and it's going to continue on. If you're looking at overseas jurisdictions, if it was in the United States, and of course it's a bigger play and it's much more complex than New Zealand politics, would certainly grant them that. One would imagine that it would certainly rock the, the administration to its core. Um, you know, people with these kind of scandals often come up with such and such gate, you know, yeah. GCSB oh, yes, gate. Yes, yes. We haven't here in New Zealand on this. Uh, but you know there is it's a one theme. saving grace that you haven't had the uh, the term for it with something with gate on the end of it. <laughs> yeah. gate, perhaps. One yeah. one could imagine that if it keeps going the way it is, then there develops a case where there is well, there's already questions around where does the incompetence or the corruption end, mm. and the longer we've all looked at this the closer it gets to the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. OK, OK. Um, so for the moment, is it is then you know, the, the fact that he's remaining popular because, you know, the spy agency wouldn't be seen by, you know, the average everyday person as being something that's really going to have that much relevance to them if it was, yeah, maybe. you know, these kinds of things coming up in another uh, yeah. department that directly affected them? Perhaps it would be a different story. I think the talking to people that don't really follow politics and things, it seems that what's starting to stick and get into their DNA relating to John Key is when he's caught out, he, he stretches the truth or he avoids telling the truth. And that's certainly, the avoidance of telling the truth has certainly been a pattern um, that has been able to be identified now. Um, when that starts to stick to your political leader, you know, it's a pretty difficult one to shed, mm. um, that, that kind of reputation. That, that seems to be um, his modus operandi. Um, is, is to try and avoid anything that may be difficult. If he came out in this whole issue, anybody could see. If he front-footed, yes, yes, I appointed my uh, m- you know, a schoolyard friend um, from years ago. He's the head of the GCSB, but he's got a glowing testimonial and he can do the job fantastically, and this is why we've appointed him. I think people would forgive him for that. Okay. Okay. Um, but, it, but he didn't. He tried to hide it and then blurted it out in Parliament when he was under pressure, and then it goes much more deeper than that. But the, the big key to this whole thing, in my view, Peter, is why did the the um, GCSB and the DPMC, which is the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, go to the uh, acting Prime Minister when John Key was overseas and request he sign, um, Bill English sign, a ministerial certificate that prevented any disclosure that the GCSB had been illegally spying, and that was signed by the acting Prime Minister. 
And that's when you start to think, well, what is really going on here? Mm. It sounds dodgy at best. Mm. Yeah. yeah, to be continued, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. On to another one, one of your most macabre homicides uh, to go before the, the, the courts. This is yeah. uh, macabre, bizarre, uh, weird, another weird story. Tell us uh, tell us yeah. the background of this one. Yes, um, now the, the case is before the courts at the moment. It's ongoing and the accused, uh, a man called Gavin John Gosnell, now he is accused of murdering 15-year-old Christchurch schoolboy Hayden Miles. Um, now, this individual, the accused, he admits that he caused the death of Hayden. Um, he admits that he carved up his body with knives and a portable bandsaw and buried the parts in two fresh graves at two different cemeteries, but he denies that he intended to kill him. Now, this case is mm. certainly um, shocking people, mm. um, and much of the much of the uh, detail that has been put to the jury is not making it into the public arena. Yeah, yeah. But there's also, in the latest um, turn in the case yesterday, the court heard how a former partner of his uh, testified that she, um, that, that the accused was fantasising over killing a young person for many years. And uh, the whole case is starting to, to um, raise certain, you know, obviously questions about really how we are protecting our young people and how mm. we are not. Um, the, the, the murder victim was only 15, as we're speaking, uh, mentioned this before, and uh, he was um, in, in uh, foster care at the time. And uh, so there are a lot of questions that obviously all come from that too, Peter. Yeah, indeed, terrible. All right, so I'm going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your report this week, and uh, we'll get another one from you next week. All the best. Okay, Peter. Cheers, okay. bye-bye. Bye. So we're Manning in New Zealand. Uh, for more news from that part of the world, head to livenews.co.nz. After the news, love to talk to you. 8223 0000. Huge drive away today demo sale on all models at Agostino Mitsubishi. 5.30 on 5AA, mostly sunny at top today of 29. I'm Anne Stone with Adelaide's Comprehensive News. It's feared parking in the CBD could cost $6 more a day if a proposed car park tax goes ahead. The state government announced a new $750 annual car parking levy late last year to be charged at about $2 per space per day from July next year. But car park operators say that cost is more likely to be 5 or $6 because not all spaces are occupied 24 hours a day. A survey by the Property Council has found most people feel CBD parking is already too expensive, while only 1 in 10 thinks they could afford a 